All right, this is my buddy Jordan Meehan. Uh, you, you were just mentioning my T-shirt. You, you checked out these guys? I sure did. NoNameSaint.com. Yes, they yeah. got great gear on there. Yeah, it's cool, right? Like they literally, so I talked to a, a buddy of mine who's like an old rocker guy. And I was like, yeah, they take old rock shirts and they take like belt sanders and like make them into art pieces. And he was like, no, nah, that's not cool, man. <laughs> like the, to, to a certain degree of like old punk rocker, you shouldn't do that. But to these guys, they're literally taking, we're just, we're just shooting the shit, by the way. It's like, we're going to talk about fighting, I swear. They just kind of go and they drag their leather jackets behind their motorbikes and just wreck it up and stuff. That's cool. That's yeah, great. it's I cool. Like it. I like it. Um, but you checked it out be because you were going to buy clothes. Is that something you're into? Do you, no, do you, you care about what you wear? Uh, no, I, I wear all this the stuff the UFC gives <laughs> Free shit? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Always the free yeah. stuff. And then I wear it so much that by the time the next fight comes, I need new stuff. Right. And I even sent them a message like, you guys should send me some stuff so I can look professional on Instagram. They're like, no, you got to yeah. wait. I was like, oh. okay. <laughs> um, so you were fighting, you're 16. So you've been wearing free like shirts with skulls and battle axes and right. shit on it since then. Since then, yeah. since since then. And we've, uh, he used to give out free hoodies and, and, and with the rumble in the yeah. cage. and. My dad, I'm talking that's, about That's here Jordan's on. dad, Lee, and I'm gonna, in, depending when you watch this, it'll probably be uh, one up with Lee, me and him are gonna hang. He's, your dad is now almost 50 and he's still fighting. Still fighting, still an absolute savage. <laughs> if you've ever seen him, yeah. any pictures yeah. of him fighting and his yeah. body, he's bodied up yeah. and he's a d mad diesel. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been to his last couple fights? Uh, his last couple, no, I watched his last boxing one yeah. online though and it was did devastating. Did he win? He did and yeah. crushed the guy. Um, you're not gonna fight when you're 50. Oh yeah, I'll be fighting. You yeah? Fight. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. <laughs> yeah. I'm still at the Rumble. We'll, yeah. be, we'll have the freaking geriatrics division, and yeah. my uncle Rob will be there fighting. And how old is he? <laughs> He's what? What's Rob? Two years old. Yeah. What? We we had a show one time where all three of us fought on the same you show. You fucking you guys are lunatics. Uncle, yeah. father, and son. It was great. <laughs> when so when you took a break and we're like, I'm not gonna fight for a while, you had to find like when you this is so in you to do that it had to be weird thinking like that you weren't fighting when oh it was a definitely an identity crisis yeah. for sure that's all i've known is mixed yeah. martial arts and the reason why i retired was just the kind of the climate of what was going on at the time mm -hmm. and i was very i didn't ever i didn't ever see it as an opportunity i mm -hmm. seen it as i want more i want this i mm -hmm. want that and that doesn't it's, there's a reality check that needs to happen, and I, everybody wants more, obviously, yeah. right? But to see the opportunity that I actually have, and that gave me some time to think about it, and like, oh, this is great. This, I get to go back, and I get to, yeah. they're still paying me to do this? Are you kidding <laughs> me? Like, yeah, that's pretty sweet. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know if you know, uh, saw, I, I'm close with Jordan and his dad. Uh, I, when I was on Rogan's podcast once, he asked me about, well, your name came up and he asked me about you. And he said, why did that kid stop? He was so talented. And I said, I'm just guessing, but I feel like at the time he's fighting the best guys of the world and thinking, I'm not getting paid enough money. Was that partly true? That was definitely part yeah. of it. Yeah, there yeah. was a, it was a bunch like of Tiago things. Tiago Alves and like, your, uh, you know, Matt Brown, like you were fighting the top 10 guys in the world and there, you were making $30,000 mm -hmm. and, and it, that felt weird. It did, it did and, and I, it still feels that way, but also there's how much guy, you get to see on certain cards, how much guys are actually getting paid. So you get to see where yeah. you're kind of, where <laughs> yeah. you sit in the mix, right? right? And, and I could, you could pout about that, yeah. you know, and I, and I did, and you could see, even in with the rest of the UFC fighters, that a lot of people were bitching and complaining, mm -hmm. and you know what I mean, there was a couple, mm -hmm. there was like a year there where everybody was kind of complaining, and then the Reebok thing, and then, mm -hmm. the, and it was constantly complaining. Right. So and it becomes a culture of complaining. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly, and I stepped out from that, and I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, this is a huge opportunity, this mm -hmm. is, I love doing And this. you like fighting. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I, I love fighting, I love getting in there and competing, that is a huge part of who I am, is to be a warrior, yeah. live like a warrior, get in there and literally, f I get to fight. I get to fight for my freedom, yeah. which is money. You yeah. know, it's a partly yeah. freedom there yeah. for a few months, yeah. however long yeah. the money lasts. <laughs> yeah, but all you, all you have to look forward to when the money runs out is fighting again, which you still like. Mm -hmm. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like when you, it's a fucking crazy thing. It's, so first of all, for you to say, um, you know, I was pouting 
a lot of people don't ever look back at themselves and go, how did I view the world in a way that I think I could change and view it differently? So mm. already you're self-aware, you're doing Absolutely. that, which is more than 90% of the world today. Mm. And that's mm. not a diss. It's just a lot of us don't spend a lot of time going, why do I vote for this person? Why do I believe these things? Is this partially influenced by media or mm. other ideas, et cetera, well, that came, et cetera? Well, that came up with like, why am I fighting? Am I fighting for, for my father? Am I fighting yeah. for somebody else? Yeah. Am I fighting for money? Am I fighting yeah. for, and that all, all those questions came up and in this identity thing, like, okay, well, I'm not a fighter anymore. What am I going to do? What I'm am I? Regular. Exactly. Yeah. What am I? And it was interesting. And I was like, well, you know what? I still really enjoy training. I really yeah. enjoy fighting. I really, you know, the whole experience of getting in there and testing yourself yeah. and going past the limits you think you can even go. Mm -hmm. That's, that intrigues me so much. And I don't know if any other, anybody else has these desires, but I like have a desire inside of me. Not all the time, it's not 24 seven, but it's deep in there. I'm like, I gotta fight. Like I have, yeah. to, do, I have to do some warrior shit or else I'm not <laughs> yeah. satisfied. Yeah, that's an amazing thing. But there are definitely different people that fight for many, many different reasons. And I think the purest one is, I gotta do some warrior shit. Do you know what I mean? I think that's the most real reason to fight is somewhere in you, in your genetic code, when you look at your fucking dad, it's partly there, and then you keep going all the way up. Somebody in there fought for the tribe or mm. fought the other alpha Absolutely. male or fought to defend something. It's somewhere in you. Absolutely. And, and it's the most natural reason to fight is because it feels right. Mm -hmm. and, each, and each tribe has their warriors. They have the people that mm -hmm. go out and they fight the other tribe I'm that's yeah. that's me and and it's I'm not I'm not even sure if it's genetic but it's definitely your environment and mm -hmm. the environment or both been most likely absolutely both. absolutely yeah. so I think genetics plus the environment I was raised in lots of scrap and lots of fighting if yeah. you've been to the CMC yeah, you know yeah. how hard I got a concussion is. there it's it's dangerous there <laughs> yeah. it's dangerous and that's what breeds great fighters as well there's there's obviously negatives yeah. to it yeah. but you know that's that's what it takes and that's yeah. what we've done there and yeah. we've created so many top level athletes in such yeah. a small little town. Yeah, it's, it really is an incredible culture, an incredible vibe in there and there's something so pure and natural which is why by this point it's not easy to fight but it becomes less stressful every time which is why your dad fucking goes, drives out somewhere on the weekend and fights some 250 pound 28 year old. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's less stressful on some level because it's what you're doing feels more natural. Well for me it's it's easier, it really is easier than thinking of I'm gonna go get a nine to five job and that terrifies me. Like fighting is very easy compared to that for me. Yeah, like, right. I, it is so natural for me, the yeah. movements, the the vision of seeing where the punches are coming, seeing, you mm -hmm. know, the whole looking at the chest, look at the dristy yeah. that the yogis, yeah. the yogis always talk about. The, that is so much easier to me than thinking of, okay, I'm gonna go sit down at a desk job, or not saying that that's the option that I have right. to have, but. Or whatever, a physical job, a, you know, a, your own business, selling something, whatever it is, none of those things appeal to you as much or feel as natural as fighting. Absolutely, and that's why I, I went back to it, and I and have the opportunity to go back to it. The door didn't shut, mm -hmm. you know, it was mm -hmm. still open for me, they still mm -hmm. gave me this opportunity, and yeah. When, when something comes towards your face, for you, it's the most natural thing to just slip out slightly and hit it, right? Like if something is coming at you, whatever that is, like if somebody throws something and tells a regular person, here, catch that, like, right, you right. know what I mean? For you, it, it is as natural as breathing or drinking water to move and hit something back. It can be, it can be, and it's not necessarily, it's, it's like I was talking, looking here, mm -hmm. it's seeing the whole picture and, and not necessarily the ball coming at your right. face, but I'm recognizing, yeah. okay, here comes the yeah. arm. That's why right. when you ever see yeah. that Michael Jai White, he was talking to Kimbo and he's talking mm -hmm. about the straight punch mm -hmm. and what your eye picks yeah. up. That's a big part of what we train. You yeah. know, like what right. the, the and, center and line of that elbow what the hip up, does and, wh and how the shoulder drops in a certain thing or what your face does. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, And this is, a, it's all, it's like a big acting class. Yeah. It's like, can I pick up on what you're showing me you're gonna do? Can I? You're, you're telling me what you're gonna yeah. do. Can I pick up on that? Yeah. Um, and do you, you know the movie True Romance? It was written by... Um, yes. Yeah, and in it he goes, uh, it's a game of pantomime. You're trying not to show me anything, but you're telling me everything. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, that that's the game. But then now at that point, once you start to master level one or two or 10 or whatever of that, now you start telling lies to him. 
and the better that your opponent is, you use that against him. Mm -hmm. He starts, you know that he knows that this might be an uppercut, and instead you sell him that and something else comes. Exactly. And then you sell him this, where he thinks, well, actually, Jordan is faking, and it turns out, but it's real. Mm -hmm. And that, mm -hmm. that, that. That's the game. Yeah. That's and the game. to me, so now we're touching on something that, when you and I watch, um, uh, Damian Maya versus Tywin Woodley, or you watch Woodley against, um, I guess, Wonder Boy. There's fucking fascinating shit happening mm -hmm, in there mm -hmm. with their with the lies they're telling each mm -hmm, other, mm -hmm. right? And threats and the implications of what they mean. But to the average person, and it's not their fault. Most people have jobs and families yeah, and yeah, lives yeah. and stuff. But on some level, it's my job and the job of people like me to teach them or show them how incredible that is rather than just pile on and say oh it was boring not a lot of action totally. you know? and I don't even know if teaching is the right word but at least yeah. sending them in the direction they can learn themselves because it yes. takes a, it takes time to learn that yeah it takes time to train your eye to see what you're because the casual fan they just see oh that was a big right hand or that was a big <laughs> left hand but all the little tiny things that were in there to make that happen or the things that they're not even seeing like yeah. you said that's yeah that's a big part of it we my dad and I were talking about that like People aren't even, we're literally watching yeah. two different, we're not even watching the same thing. We're not even watching the same fight because. Ugh. I just feel so much, I feel so much better after I talk to a bunch of fighters and coaches and stuff. Because I sit there in our lab making my YouTube videos and I'm, I'm like, the shit that they're telling you on television that you're watching is not what you're watching, mm -hmm. you know? Well, you know, this guy's a big striker, but that guy's a great grappler, you know? If he takes the opportunity to use good takedown defense, that's all bullshit. Mm -hmm. None of it is the actual fight that's taking place. Mm -hmm. And so it's not the audience's fault. When somebody has said, this guy's got knockout power in both hands, but he's got a great chin, they really think that my hand versus your chin is all that's happening. Right. It's not the fault of the viewer. It's the fault of the system that helps share these things mm -hmm. you know well they gotta they gotta reach such a broad audience and there's only going to be a certain percentage of us that really take that to the next level of we're extremists we love this stuff we love it so much we're going to study it we're going to watch it we pick up on those things and if you're just a broad casual fan yeah you're right it's yeah. not their fault they don't really even need to see that no you know? but but there is something that's actually happening and then there's the thing that ha they've been sh shown to see yeah that's a really great way of putting it what is actually happening in there is not at all what is being seen and not at all in, in a lot of cases what's being described or reported on after the fact mm -hmm. and a lot of it is feel in there too a lot uh, not you know we, at in the gym we i use you know a lot of logical okay we can break it down logic mm -hmm. we can use our words mm -hmm. we can you know communicate about mm -hmm. this we can okay well, let's go break it down here 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 but when it's actually happening i'm not thinking mm -hmm. logically in that sense mm -hmm. i'm more reacting and feeling yeah. and using the training and trying to set up these different um and making your way down. through the oat through the fight itself that's right you know flowing like, your what's way what's through his name it. hickson would talks about like the invisible jiu-jitsu or whatever yeah. there's there's a lot of things going on there yeah. that you're not really because there's a feel when two yeah. bodies are together there's not something yeah. you can necessarily see but you can when you're doing it you can feel it have you ever played with push hands? That that old Chinese game of push hands, where you pressure against each other to put each I've other. I've seen up it. Else? I've never really played yeah. with it, and and my friend Jesse Bongfeld, he'll be yeah. he'll be uh, cornering me this oh, this awesome. weekend too. And awesome. he was uh, just bringing that up because he's been into that forever, Jeet Kune Do and all yeah. of that. And he was he brought some of that up to me, and, and I find it super interesting, yeah. but I've never really do dove into it. I was um, I just commentated the World Sanda Championships, which yep. was what Kung Lee did. But then I also uh, commentated sort of forms and patterns at the World Kung Fu Championships in China. Mm. And so I'm immer I did 900 single performances. Some of them were a minute wow. or less, but just over and over and over and over again. And suddenly it hit me. It's like, how the fuck? Is it possible that an entire world of martial arts has arbitrarily said, oh, you know Chinese martial arts? That's nonsense. <laughs> the 2,000 years of development of that martial art, we got nothing we can learn from there. That's insanity. Mm -hmm. There's so much in Chinese martial arts that when somebody is training straight kickboxing or boxing or jiu-jitsu would be super applicable because it's outside the box. Mm -hmm, absolutely. You know? And that's a lot, of, a lot of things like that that people train those not so much high percentage mm -hmm. moves like the guillotine or the double leg yeah. takedown or the jab yeah. you know those are super high percentages and those are great to to get good at and you know what i mean you can have a great game by building off of three things mm -hmm. you know what i mean a jab jab and low kick exactly and, and, that, and there's nothing wrong with that i really admire that actually you know i really admire that but you know there's i don't even know where i'm going with yeah. this but. The, but, but i mean you can also 
be awesome with the jab and a low kick and a, and a double leg takedown, but have that one other thing, that's especially right, if you weird. never yeah. show it, you that's know? Right. Well, and if you're training yeah. it, it can become high percentage yeah, for you. Right. And, and if you're fighting a traditional fighter, these different techniques mm -hmm. can be used. I love that kind of, yeah. I love finding old ancient techniques yeah. that are forgotten about yeah. or, or whatever yeah. and aren't traditional. Yeah. I love that kind of thing. Uh, I, I always kind of look at it like, the only thing that's just as good as creating something new is finding something forgotten. Mm. Because it's new to that guy. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's new to him. It's new to his coach. It's new to the audience. I mean, when George St. Pierre dusted off the can opener for Carlos Condit, people hadn't been using can openers for years because, oh, you'll get arm barred. Yeah, yeah. And Danaher and... That's and, a big guy yeah. move. It doesn't yeah. work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> and, and you'll get arm barred, so you better not do it. And Danaher was like, no, we'll do it. We'll just shut down the armbar. We'll just position you to lock your hips, and you can't open a, Carlos Condit until he opens his legs. Mm -hmm. and, it, and, it, and then elbow him in the That's face. Right. And of right. course it worked. Um, I was talking to James Krause, and we were talking about, like, remember when you were first learning jiu-jitsu, and they're like, never cross your feet mm -hmm. when you do an armbar. You do it all the time. Right, now. right, and right. there's a thousand. Uh, the front kick doesn't work in MMA. Right. And then, you know, Machida and... Right. Uh, that's, well, yeah. at the, at the, it depends on what level you're getting taught at. Because mm. at, in, in the beginning, you need big, broad statements yeah. to don't never do this. But then when you go 10 years down the road, well, actually, yeah. you can do everything. It's just yeah. applicable in a certain this time. This started you down a path. Mm -hmm. uh, so your dad, like like um, Dwayne Ludwig and others, came down straight kind of through Boss Rutten systems, right? Mm -hmm. Even Boss, the great Boss Rutten, who is a part of your lineage mm -hmm. all the way. I, I have early footage calling his old fights. I got to call the old Pancreas fights. And there's an interview with him, and he's like, don't jab in MMA. Jab doesn't work in MMA. You know, that was a guy, brilliant on the very front end, mm -hmm. but it, because it was so new, they, and people didn't jab, because mm -hmm. boss said don't jab. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Well, they and change and change and change in the rules. And everybody change. has their opinion, too, and, yeah. and maybe in his mind that the jab isn't isn't going yeah. to work. But, but I think, he, it, and you change your opinion, because mm -hmm. I'm sure he thinks it does absolutely, now. Because you see it does, right? Yeah, amazing. Um, so, uh, last thing, and we're running out of time, but uh, it's good to see you, man. It's, it's good to, to see, see you, too, Robin. I'm glad we got to do yeah, this. Yeah, me too. Um, this this guy, do you know much about him, and do you care, like, to go Eric? in? Eric? Yeah. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I've been watching him for yeah. since the beginning, and he's super exciting, yeah. super explosive, mm -hmm. and I've been noticing he's been losing quite a bit, getting knocked out here and there, and I want I want to do the same to him. I, I mean, I've been losing. I'm on a three-fight losing streak, so that's that's terrible as far as the record mm -hmm. goes. But as far as my spirit goes, it's I'm I'm great. I'm doing that's great. Good, I'm I'm fantastic. I'm I'm going in there to just let it all let it all on the line, leave it all in in the cage, and to to do that is is not easy. It's not yeah. easy to do that. It's but it's also rewarding to do that yeah. to really let it all out because you can have fights and and you know dance around and I've definitely had plenty of these and even one. But sometimes when you don't give it all, mm -hmm. give it your all, I just feel like sometimes I don't. I'm not satisfied yeah. with a win or a loss. You know, I learn things from it, but this next one, I really want to be satisfied with myself as far as, mm -hmm. you know, really letting it all, letting it all out. Yeah, and finding out something new about yourself or knocking them out and just being done with that That's and right. we'll go get beer. That's right. That's why I have a hard time talking about fighting sometimes because a lot of it is non-verbal. It's, yeah. it's just happening in there. It's yeah. reacting. It's, mm -hmm. you know, but there's people like you your beautiful self here that we got you know you break things down and, ah, thanks, and that's, man. that's what we need and that's what the sport needs that's what the general audience needs you know for myself personally I don't need that I I'm doing it myself mm -hmm. I'm doing your my, way exactly and I love watching your videos and I love watching people break things down because you get to see it a different sense and when I was took my time my my year retirement there I actually started seeing things and I would I got more into breaking things down mm -hmm. and more into thinking of things like this mm -hmm. rather than feeling things and so it's just different i'm now i'm back to this warrior mind state yeah. of leave it all in there and, and give it your all so I'm, I'm excited to compete again me too man i'm excited for you thanks thanks, thanks brother. Robin.